Kabuhai, Kamastakayo, and welcome to another video. So as you saw from the intro there, we're well into spring now, and it's time to get all the plants back out into the greenhouse that I brought indoors to overwinter. We're in the middle of May now, and these plants are pretty much awake and actively growing, and some of them are showing signs of wanting more light. Like this Rebutia on the left, and this badly etulated Copia Pearl on the right. They're just not getting enough light here. The Copia Pearl I'm going to have to cut the stretch parts off, because it will never grow normally again. And then hopefully it will form a nice clump over time. The Rebutia will probably be okay for now, it's not as stretched as the Copia Pearl. So even though we're in the middle of May, the temperatures are still pretty chilly at night, down to 5C some nights. So the only plants I won't be putting back into the greenhouse just yet is the Euphorbia. I'm going to leave those for another week or two. Hopefully the nighttime temperatures will pick up in that time. So before putting the plants back in the greenhouse, like I do every year, it's going to need a good clean inside and out. I've got to take all the bubble wrap down. There's already some plants in here. These ones I did leave out all winter and all of them appear to be okay, thankfully. I just didn't have room indoors for these trays where they would have got any light and because most are seedlings they would have probably stretched badly. I've got to clean out the other little greenhouse I have as well. Got this one last summer but I've not actually shown you this one or what plants were in here. But we'll have a closer look at this later on in the video. Just happy it's still here and didn't blow away in the winter. These little poly greenhouses are notorious for doing that. They usually end up in a neighbour's garden. Right, that's the main greenhouse all cleaned up. It's actually turned quite sunny and warm today, so I'm going to leave bringing the plants back out until the evening time when the sun sets. If I was to bring them back out here now, the direct sunlight could scorch them. It's good to acclimatise them to the higher light level slowly, and it's meant to be overcast tomorrow and the following day as well, so that's good. Right, they're all back in, finally. Always takes a little while to get them all back in here and deciding where each one is going. They're all going to get their second watering and first feed in a couple of days as well. I'll include that in the video too, and then a day or two after they've all been watered, we'll have a bit of a tour of all the plants in here as well. Right, time to water them all. I have to really thank Edith for surprising me and sending me this pressure sprayer as well for watering the plants. This has cut my watering times in half using this. Before this I was using a small squirt bottle to water most of the plants with. And that was just taking ages and having to keep filling it up every five minutes. So and here are some feed as well. For the past few years I've been using Chempak fertilizer. But I use this at half the recommended amount. It is quite strong stuff. And I'll feed all the plants with this once a month during the growing season. Right, let's get watering. I always water my plants during the evening time. It is apparently the best time to water your plants because of Crassulation Acid Metabolism, or CAM. I've spoken briefly about that in the past, but I'll put a link in the description to a video by Cactus Quest that goes into way more detail about it. So when I water my plants, I do soak the entire plant as well. Keeps them clean, washes any dust off, and helps to deter pests as well. And I'm watering each one until the water starts coming out of the drainage holes. Hopefully I'll get a few more buds start developing now as well. Before I brought them indoors back in January, there were quite a few that were showing early signs of buds, but sadly they're all purged because of being moved. Mostly the Rebutia and a few Gymnocalisium. But there are some with buds still, we'll show you those during the tour. Right, it's been a couple of weeks since that footage, we're now into early June. Nice sunny day today, so I'll give you a bit of a tour in here as well. See how everything is getting on. They've all certainly plumped up anyway, and generally look more healthier after their second watering and feed. Got a parodia here coming to bud. That flowered last year and set seed. Still a seed pod attached, so I'll need to remove that soon.
in this corner are the larger ones. My big Ferrocactus Horridus, which does need a repot this year. That'll be fun. Mostly a Puntia and Tephra Cactus in this area. Some of Puntia Vulgaris I grew from seed about three or four years old now. This Echinopsis subdenudata you might remember, it's got badly cold damaged in the winter and then got what looked like fungus on it, but it's fully recovered, just badly scarred unfortunately. Mammillaria carmenaean flower. Not many flowers on it at the moment, but this usually flowers on and off throughout the summer. But yeah, not many more buds or flowers to speak of. I've had more flowers on the ones that grow on the windowsills all year round than any of these ones. Still lots of time for many of these to come into bud though. This parodia has flowered already, and there's a couple more buds developing. And some buds just started to form on this Chamelabivia. Mammillaria boccasana, always a reliable bloomer. And that's been flowering on and off since January, February time. Frailia with a bud. And that's the badly stretched Copia Poa. I will do a video on that when it comes to fixing this plant. It just might take a while. Now the nighttime temperatures are staying around 10 degrees, the euphorbia are back in here as well. These Mammillaria gracilis from Ziggy's Cactus channel were just starting to suffer from being indoors as well. So it's good to get these in here. And in this tray is mostly Echinopsis. A couple of Turbinocarpus there. And a few seedlings, mostly Fralia. And then up here is mostly Succulents. Echeveria, which did suffer a bit from being indoors over the winter as well. Hopefully they'll recover well over the summertime. Some Clyso cactus. And some more succulents at the end there. And this shelf here is a recent purchase. I wasn't sure I'd have room for a third shelf, but it fits in there nicely. And on here it's mostly gymnos.
Master of Items, and a Loaf of Horror on there as well. So yeah, it's good to finally get the plants back in here after that horrible long cold winter. Spring and summer were a bit late this year, but hopefully that means more flowers are just a bit late this year and more of these will come into bud over the coming weeks and months. So the other greenhouse I got, like I said, I got this last year. I was meant to do a video on it, but just didn't get round to doing it. But you're seeing some of that footage now. There wasn't many plants in here last year, just mostly seedlings I had in the grow tent indoors that I potted up and put out here. Which is what will probably be going in here again this year. But yeah, it's a decent little greenhouse, feels quite sturdier than a lot of similar ones. I think at the time this was 50 or 60 pounds from Amazon. So not a bad price either. Plenty of shelving as well, which is good. So all I've got in here at the moment plant-wise are just some that I'm propagating. And a few are puntier I've grown from seed at the front there. And some red giant sunflowers as well, which we planted into the garden once they're bigger. So yeah, all that will be going in here are more seedlings that I pot up throughout the summer and my propagation plants as well, which is the main reason I got it. Those seedlings I have in the grow tent indoors can't stay in there forever. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Let's hope the summer drags now because that winter we had definitely dragged on for too long. Certainly one to forget anyway. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like and comment. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the notification bell as well so you know when I upload a new video. You will be safe and well and I shall see you next time. Salamat pop alam. Bye for now.